ancient texts, cryptic numbers, symbolic imagery depicting awesome apocalyptic events. For many, the Bible and its prophecies seem shrouded in mystery. Words like Armageddon and Tribulation frighten millions, while others wonder how to avoid the mark of the beast or being left behind when the Lord returns. Can we understand the Bible? Yes. And Jesus holds your key to unlock a future without fear. Join us now as Mount Pisgah SDA Church presents Unlocking Revelation with Pastor Julian. Today's study, Righteousness by Faith. Our final lesson is just how can I how can I be a child of God? How can I be saved in his kingdom? This is all that we begin talking about. Salvation by faith. How is righteousness obtained? Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Let me say something at the outset of this lesson. Listen carefully to me. Every system of false religion has at its foundation a diminishing or a discarding of the role of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? I repeat. Every system of false religion either diminishes or discards Jesus Christ. The only hope or way of salvation is through Christ. So if you diminish the role of Christ, meaning that you still got some Jesus there, you call his name, or you discard him altogether, you would have accomplished the same thing. Now, you name it. Name the religions. All right, okay. Let us start with the false brand of Christianity that we know. And the spin-off, Roman Catholicism. There is a diminishing of the role of Christ. You talk Christ, you, but who Christ really is, is not presented to people. How do we diminish Christ? Simple, simple. You teach children about them having a godfather. Are you with me? You know who a godfather really was, right? He was supposed to be a benefactor. Uh, if the child needed a pair of sneakers or they needed a book, go ask your godfather. You were supposed to be a spiritual guardian for this child. If the parent dies, then you, you know, you. Whereas when the child has a need, the parent should encourage the child to get on their knees and ask Jesus Christ to provide when you send the child to the Godfather, you're not sending the child to Christ. Guess what? The role of Christ in the life is diminished. You want me to add more? Watch this. Mary, you, 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 you send your prayers through Mary. And guess why that is quoted? When at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, when they ran out of wine, they came to Mary, and then Mary went to Christ. And they're basically teaching that, well, listen, Christ will never ever refuse a request from his mother. So, if you pray to Mary, now, look at the implication. You're praying to someone who is dead. To take a prayer to someone who is living. Oh yes, oh yes. Well, she's assumed. To, well, 
that you know she was bodily assumed into heaven that's their teaching but that's not what the bible says that woman in revelation 12 is not mary oh by the way let's add the saints oh listen and you know what's the teaching while they was while while they were on earth they acquired so much grace grace that they don't need and when you are born you are given a patron saint whether saint philip or saint jude or saint thomas or that is your patron saint you're assigned one and whatever you need you go to your patron saint who got so much grace all the while and by the way let me add this pay close attention the lord established a priesthood he had the priest dress a certain way and there was a sanctuary service you would think that the system of false religion will also have a sanctuary service the sacrifice at a mass are you with me and priests that are robed in sanctuary colors what is sanctuary colors blue purple and scarlet you would expect them to be dressed that way and by the way those colors speak to Christ you didn't hear me he is prophet priest and king <laughs> listen that's a whole every system of false religion has no use a diminishing or a total discarding of the role of Jesus Christ Satan knowing full well that there is one mediator there is one name on the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and that name is Jesus go to the confessional boot go to the confessional boot and say all the Hail Marys that they tell you to say instead of going to your Heavenly Father now that's a diminishing of Christ and then the discarding of Christ altogether are you with me Hinduism are you with me Hinduism what they believe in reincarnation now if you're reincarnated you if you believe in reincarnation you don't need Christ for life eternal no as a matter of fact you already have life eternal eternal because you are what immortal and you make certain that each cycle of life you strive to live a better life so that when you come back in the next life you're coming back what at a higher stage please don't be a wicked man because if you live the life of a wicked man you may come back as a dog or a pig or something this is what is taught Islam Islam what does Islam teach Hey, he was a good man he was a prophet but he was not the son of God he didn't die for your sins and by the way salvation consists of killing infidels because when you kill the infidels you're doing the will of Allah and added to that you must do certain good deeds and you must make a pilgrimage to Mecca you must pray towards Mecca so many times a day and you must where is Christ in all of this Buddhism through meditation you get in touch with the divine that's in you and by the way Eastern mysticism is planting its standard in God's church oh yes now listen meditation is good 
But notice what the psalmist says. Thy word has been my meditation day and night. That's the meditation. Not the meditation where you sit. Oh, let me watch this. Listen carefully to me. And this is something that we, we practice and we don't even realize what we are doing. Now, I am not here condemning anyone, just opening our eyes. When I grew up, I didn't see it, but it has, I'm seeing it for a number of years now. When we pray, we form this circle and we hold hands. Hold a second. And the explanation for that is the joining of hands is, a symbol, is sim, symbolic of unity. Watch this. When you see them devil worshippers and them sit down and they, and they got their feet crossed in that position and they, you know why they touch? You know why they hold hands? They do. I! They want the energy to flow and if there is a break in it, the energy will not flow through the circle. So if one catches the enlightenment and we're all connected, the energy just what? Flows. That's where it comes from. That is where it comes from. Hold your question to the end. That's Buddhism. And every other system of false religion has no use for Jesus Christ. Why? That fella hates Christ with a passion. And by the way, by the way, if there are some of us who know the theory of truth, but we do not know the author of truth. Uh-oh. You didn't hear what I just said. I'm a pastor. I can speak to pastors. You know what she says? She says there are many pastors preaching about someone who they do not know or who they have never met. Talk about Christ in glowing terms. They've never met him or don't even know him. And this is life eternal. John 17, 3 is a favorite text of mine. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Do my works contribute to salvation? For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I can't work my way into heaven. If I work my way into heaven, then heaven becomes a debt that, God, that Christ owes me. Why? I've earned it. When you work during the week, <laughs> that what you get at the end is what? It's yours. You earned it. The gift of life eternal is that's just what it is. It's a gift. Our justification. Salvation consists of three parts. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. What does justification accomplish for me? Being justified to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. As a sinner, I come to Christ. All wretched and broken. I got nothing to offer. And you know how he looks at me? When I... Let me, let, let me share this with you. 
do you know even those who have not the atheist today and all those who stand and curse Christ and who are members of the synagogue of Satan and worship Satan as the Lord and Savior do you know even they are benefiting from the sacrifice of Christ listen to this this earth was in a state of rebellion and ripe for destruction Christ stood in between the Father's wrath, the justice that was supposed to be meted out, and he says, I'm going to die for them. And because of the death of Christ, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Even those who curse him, the blood of Christ shields them from the wrath of the Father until one day, They may heed the Spirit of God and surrender their life to Christ. All. And so, through the death of Christ, listen carefully to me, we are declared righteous. God looks at us as if we have never sinned. Why? Because we have an advocate. We have a sacrifice, Jesus Christ the righteous. What must I do to receive justification or forgiveness for past sins? What? If I what? He's faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What else is justification called? Except a man be what? Born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You know the oh happy day when G what a what a, what a day that was. That was a day of passing from what? Death unto life. The world, the sun shone brighter, the birds sang sweeter. Why? Christ just entered into the life. Our sanctification. What is sanctification? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. This is Christ possessing us. What? Those who he accounts righteous, he makes righteous. He does a work within us. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto Unto holiness. How long does it take for a person to become fully sanctified? Till we all what? All come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So who's? Who's, who's the goal? Who's the end? Christ. And watch this now. Listen to this. We will, listen to, follow me. The Bible, the Lord says of Job, Job was what? Perfect and upright. One who feared God and eschewed evil. Job was living without sinning. We don't have to sin, you know. Sin is choice. And the same way we exercise, exercise the choice one way, we can exercise it the other way. But watch this now. There was an added dimension to Job's character that had to grow. And notice, when the trial was over, Job sin, the Bible says Job didn't sin. But when the Lord, when, when Job challenged, challenged, challenged Christ, he said, listen, I want you to show up, show up in court and present your case against me. I want a daysman. Let there be an arbitrator to plead my case. And then the Lord didn't answer Job according to Job's charges. Who is he, the darkness, counseled by words without? And when Job heard the where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Where were you? What did God do? God presented himself to Job in a more, in more splendor than Job knew him. 
notice that Job said, listen, I talk a little too quick and I, I, what am I saying? There is always room for what? Growth. Because in Christ, in Christ, perfection is always being perfected. No, you don't, no, hold on. You didn't, you're saying yes and I don't think you're grasping what you're saying. As I shared this in a couple of earlier lessons, if the hand, if the earth comes forth from the hand of the creator at recreation more glorious than when it was created and when it was created back then, he looked at it and he said it was good. That when the Bible says God ended his work and he rested, it's like, you know, when you finish a task and you say, yes. That is what happened. So there was nothing more that he could give. It means that from the time this world was created to the time it is recreated, something happened within God. And watch this now. Pay close attention. If perfection was a certain point, then, Scotty, sometime during the ceaseless ages of eternity, we can get there. But if perfection is infinite, you see what I'm saying? Then guess what's going to happen? Guess what the redeemed will see? As Christ continues his recreative work, no, not his recreative work. Continues his work of creation. Notice what the servant of the Lord says. She says, when he created mankind, it was an order of beings that he had never created before. So it tells us something. That throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, as we watch more and more worlds coming into existence, what will we be seeing? Higher and higher and still. Something to think about. How is sanctification accomplished? Sanctify them through thy truth. Notice what I said to you earlier. Don't look for revelation outside of God's word. Look where in his word. Do I, obey the, do I obey the word or does Jesus do it in me? God sending his own son that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Christ does it for me. What, what does God ultimately accomplish in me through sanctification? To be conformed how? To the image of his son. Salvation past, present, and future. How does the Bible emphasize that salvation involves past, present, and future? Who delivered past us from this great debt, from, such, from so great a debt, and doth deliver present, in whom we trust that he will what? Yet deliver past, present, and future. Meaning that every, the victories we gained in the past are a foretaste of the victories we will gain today and the victories that God will give to us when? In the future. That is why scripture says the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter, more and more and more unto the perfect day. How does, how the Bible pre represents, presents it? Justification is conversion. It delivers us from sin's penalty. Sanctification is victorious living. It delivers daily from sin's power. Glorification, entering heaven, will deliver us from sin's what? Presence, because sin will be no more. This means that, or the other way around is what? God has saved us from sin's penalty, justification. God is saving us from sin's power, sanctification. 
God will save us from sin's presence, glorification. Is Jesus the sole basis for my salvation? Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among man, men whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. What part do I play in salvation? If there be first what? A willing mind. Ah, meaning what? I must what? Choose. And even in the choosing, Christ gives me the strength to choose. So it's all of him. I have set before you life and death. Make a choice. Blessing and cursing. And listen to what he says. Choose life. <laughs> and he points out the choice we should make and then he gives us the strength. For it is Christ which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. It is accepted according to, if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to what a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Christian growth and necessity. What according to Isaiah is the big problem of sin? We have what? Turned everyone to his own way. That's our problem. We want or we love, we want our own way. Self. And God had laid on him the iniquity of us all. How hard is it for me sometimes to let Jesus rule my life? How hard? If thy right hand what? Offend you what? No, don't go literally cutting off your hand, you know. <laughs> and plucking out your eyes. That's not what the text means. It means that there must be a willingness to surrender whatever it is that offends. Can I lose salvation once I have received it? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. Oh yes. Oh yes. Is not one save always save? Salvation in the book of life. Can my name be removed from the book of life once it has been written there? And the answer is yes. Notice what the psalmist prays. Cast me not away from your presence and what? Take not your Holy Spirit. Do not blot my name out of your book. Can I be sure of salvation once I accept Jesus? And you what? The answer is what? Yes. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in, in you, will perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. I can be assured. The Bible says to work out our own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. How do I accomplish this? For it is God which worketh in me, both to will and to do his good pleasure. The mind must be surrendered. Notice, when Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, what was his final prayer? He says, Father, remove the... He prayed twice. He says, Father, remove this cup. And then when he came the third time, he says, Listen, Father, if this cup will not pass from me, except I drink it, let not my will but thine be done. Mean he surrendered his will to the will of his Father. And that is all we are asked to do. We must surrender our wills. It's not that we do not have a will, but the will of Christ must become ours. Jesus, our wonderful Savior, what did the angels, the 24 elders, and the four living creatures say when they received when they review Jesus' matchless plan of salvation, worthy, oh yes, worthy is the lamb that was slain. What is Jesus saying to all of us now? He says, come. Listen. 
the heaviest load we will ever carry is the load of sin. When I was pastor in the Bronx, I baptized this fella. He was a little terror to his wife. She was, she was going to church and he didn't have nothing to do with church. One Sabbath she came home, he tore up her Bible. And oh, he was. And whatever he was carrying on, he, she took a restraining order out on him. So he had to make, an, make a court appearance. And he begged me, you know, to go with him at the Bronx Courthouse. So I traveled up there the Monday morning. And we are seated in the courthouse, and I'm looking. And looking, the wife was there. But I couldn't see. He picked out his wife. He said, look her there. And I eased over to talk to her, and she won't listen. She was dead set. Anyhow, she put him out, and he started coming to church. And she left, and she went to another church. They didn't want any, but he was there, and the Lord was working on that man's heart. And the church did not have a baptismal pool, and we had to go at another church to do the baptism, and God would have it. that the same church we are going to do the baptism is the same church she's attending. And the afternoon, I'm there with the elders and all. And she's there. And when she realized that her husband is getting baptized, she came to me and she, she grabbed my coat like this. And she pulled me. She said, Pastor Julian, how can you baptize a man like that? <laughs> Little did she know God was working on that man's hand. I didn't see this, but he testified to the church. I buried him, and I brought him up. No, I said I didn't see this, but he's testifying to the church. And he did a thing like this. this is a I didn't see it, but it happened. He did this. So he's now back in church, and, you know, God, you know, mended the marriage. He became the head deacon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> salvation story is a sweet sweet thing and the brother stood up and he testified to the church he said when he was buried he said before he got baptized there was this weight on his head and when I buried him and brought him back up that weight was left beneath the water that he snatched his head feeling for the weight gone and the, listen to me the heaviest load we will ever carry is the load of sin but Christ invites us he says come come unto me all you are weary and heavy he says I know you're struggling beneath its weight he says come he says take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. And, my, and let's say this. Let's testify to one fact. When we met Christ face to face, the thing, the thought that coursed through our minds, why didn't I do this earlier? Why didn't I come to him earlier? All the cares and all the load. And then we discovered Christ and realized that indeed his yoke is easy. And, his and I say this much to you. The Christian life with Christ is the easiest life to live. You didn't hear what I just said. Listen to me. Sometimes we pass, pass off Christianity as this laborious, this, 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 this. And something we say. How many of you had a good week? 
Let me tell you something. Every week is good. Every day with Jesus. Don't tell me you had a bad week. Then you ain't walking with Christ. Even the trials, the Bible says, are God's workmen to fit us for his kingdom. Don't tell me you didn't have a good week. Then you've been walking by yourself. You've been walking by yourself and not walking with the master. Oh yes, with Christ in the life. Oh. Will I accept? You know, I told, I told someone yesterday, by the grace of God, I don't let nothing worry me. And sometimes my wife comes and she's saying certain things. I say, listen, don't bother my head with them kind of stuff. Ask her. Listen to me. Let me say this much to you. Let me say this to you. There is something that we must develop to wear a smile every day in spite of what is going on. You are not in this by yourself. Christ, listen. Let me say this to you. They got so much in the Bible. You remember Elisha and his servant? The Syrians set the trap at night. A hundred and eighty something thousand of them came. Listen to me. The prophet Elisha slept all night. Even though the Lord had communicated with him that a hundred and eighty something thousand see. Now listen, this is, watch this. What does the prophet, what is the armor of a prophet? All he got is a staff in his hands, Sister Fordyce. He ain't got, that is all he has. And you got an entire Syrian army laying ambush at night. They get up next morning and the servant now go in and, you know, make some bush tea for the old prophet because, you know, the, this is what happened. This is, this is how, this is what he did. He getting up to tend to the old prophet. And then when he looked, he ran back to Elias. He said, Lord, he said, my master, ex, look, look, look. And Elisha turns to him and says, they that be with us. Now you got 188, I think 180,000 Syrians, the Assyrian army, surround a prophet and his, his, and his assistant. A hundred, look at the odds. And then the prophet is going to look the young fellow in the eye and say, they that be with us are more than they with me in there. And the obvious answer is them, well, show me them. That's the obvious, well, show me them. That's, what, that's not in the scripture, but that would be the natural question coming from his assistant. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. All he can see is the 180,000 Syrians. And then the prophet says, Lord, open his eyes. What am I saying? We got to practice by God's grace recognizing a couple of things. There shall no evil befall you. We don't live in fear of what evil people can. People can't, nobody can touch a child of God. No matter. Hold on. Listen. Evil is present. They're going to plan and they're going to scheme and they're going to do all sorts of stuff. Ignore the plottings and the schemes and keep your knees on God on the ground and say, Lord, you're going to take me through whatever. Listen. The Assyrian king called his cabinet together and he said, you know, there's a spy in here. And the, one of his cabinet members said to him, no, there's not a spy in here. Because whenever he laid his plans to go up against Israel, the Lord would communicate to the prophet Elijah and say, listen, go tell the king, don't do so, 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 so. No. 
And he's saying, there got to be, there's a spy in here. The Israelites have planted a spy. There's one of you of my cabinet members, is a, you're a spy. And then one of them said, no. There's no, we're not spies. The problem is that man, Elijah, that he can tell what you speak even in your bedchamber. What am I seeing? There should be a boldness. Listen, not presumption, but a boldness. Knowing that every step of the way, Christ will attend. The trials will come. It will come. But when the trials come, look up and anchor your hand in his hand and say, Lord, together with this, we're going to be more than conquerors. You know, like, listen, let's face it. Life is good for us now. Brethren, we got a good life. If we open the refrigerator and we don't feel like eating peanut butter, we can eat this or we can eat that. When you open the closet to check, check your clothes, well, like a, well, you got so many suits there. Well, I go, life is good. But there are trials that will come ahead. And if we do not let these little things, what does the Apostle Paul say? Our light affliction. It's light. Hold fast to Jesus Christ. As I said, life with God, with Christ, it, it, it's the best life. And if you sin, you have an advocate. Don't let the devil keep you down. All have sinned. And none of us better than none of You know, sometimes we look at this one and, you know, she, I'm a better Christian than her. And then we look. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Will I accept that blessed peace and rest from his gracious hand today? Oh, yes. Well, we've come to the end. The last behold a man for this time. He's our creator. He created the world. He's our redeemer. He died on the cross of Calvary. He's our intercessor. He's our heavenly high priest. And finally, he's coming back for us as king of kings. And Lord of Lords, behold a man. Yes. Thank you for joining us at Mount Pisgah Seventh day Adventist Church. We pray that you have been blessed and inspired as you listen to God's words today. For more information or for further study, please visit our website at www.mountpiscahsda.org. Be blessed.